I had trained as an infectious disease specialist and got into genetics uh, from the angle of being interested in what makes people susceptible to infection. So what's the genetic basis for that? Uh, which is a, an area that's still fascinating to me, even though my genetic interests have broadened since I got into the field. In the late 1990s, when I started exploring uh, the possibility, I thought it was interesting that patients intuitively knew that uh, there were differences in members of their family that uh, that made one person get a pneumonia and end up in the hospital on a respirator and another person sort of have a mild illness and take antibiotics and never be admitted to the hospital. And it was actually you know, driven in part by that experience of sort of patients and, uh, and others around me kind of recognizing that fact and, uh, and reinforcing my interest in what was going on uh, to make someone respond differently to the same infection. I'm trained as an internist, um, and we run an adult genetics clinic at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. As I tell our uh, our residents and fellows when they come through, that you know we, the next patient in the door could have any one of thousands of different conditions uh, for us to entertain the possibility of whether they have it and to uh, to help them figure out what to do next. So the variety is. Uh, is a challenge, but it's, uh, it keeps it exciting. Being able to help a patient or sometimes a whole family understand uh, what's been going on medically with them for years and has been sort of a, a personal medical mystery for the family. We were often able to, to, uh, to diagnose a, c a condition and help them to understand that and help them get care for it. So. We still uh, spend some of our time as sort of uh, uh, medical mystery solvers, so we, we deal with some rare diseases uh, as well as some relatively common ones. Uh, but the rare ones in particular, we, we often hear the stories uh, of what people have come to call uh, diagnostic odysseys for patients that have been to many doctors over many years and kind of not found out what's what's actually causing a series of medical problems. And so when we can put that into a context and get people the right help, uh, it's by far the most gratifying part of the job. Because of the, the nature of our practice, we see only adults. And uh, so patients above the age of uh, 18. And uh, it's men and women. Um, and it's a pretty wide variety. Uh, we often see, um, as most geneticists, we see multiple members of the same family. So we might see the adult children of, uh, um, of somebody who's diagnosed with a condition, and we might see the, the aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters. So it's, uh, we see a wide variety. I can't say that we really have a typical patient right now. We don't have a typical day in genetics clinic. I do lots of other activities too. I spend, uh, as many geneticists do, I spend a lot of my time involved in medical education. So both medical students, residents, uh, fellow uh, attending staff at the hospital. Being in an academic center, there's always great opportunities to contribute to the literature, to write up uh, ca uh, cases for, uh, for medical publication. There's, there's research opportunities. Um, so in one sense, the job uh, takes a lot of hours, but it's certainly uh, not the same kind of uh, job duties as a lot of doctors who are involved in the acute management of very sick patients. So geneticists uh, in the uh, adult arena don't, uh, don't have to be in the hospital overnight for emergencies or get called back in very often. So, uh, so as far as a work-life balance, I think it's a great... Uh, a great career to uh, make sure that you have time to uh, to see your family and uh, uh, do other things in life. It's 
it's uh, it's a great time to be in genetics. Um, you know, I think that for a long time we've been talking about how uh, the Human Genome Project and the new uh, science that's out there for understanding our genomes and our genes. Uh, there's been a lot of excitement about it, but now we're really at the point where we're starting to apply it. And I think over the next five or ten years, the uh, the innovations and the way in which that'll change medical care for everyone will be uh, incredibly exciting to be part of. Lots of people talk about the cost of uh, getting your whole uh, genetic sequence or genomic sequence done coming down very rapidly. So the Human Genome Project was uh, set out to uh, to get one individual's entire DNA code uh, down on the record, so to speak, and that cost billions of dollars. And we're talking about now in the next uh, three to five years being able to do that for almost any individual for under a thousand dollars. And so when you have that information and um, you're able to make some medical decisions about things that you're uh, at risk for developing or perhaps have uh, as a uh, medical issue, uh, that'll change the whole way in which we do medicine. Um, and so uh, it's the work of thousands of people around the world that has brought us to the point where we're, we're ready to start applying that to uh, patient care, uh, both individuals that are, uh, that are ill as well as people that are well. So, uh, so it's an exciting, an exciting story and it's great to be part of it and it's, it's going to play out, I think I said five to ten years, it'll play out over the rest of this century, but I think over the next five to ten years we'll see the first big applications of that. We always talk to our trainees about picking the area that they want to be in and then making that happen. So uh, across the broad spectrum of clinical medicine, uh, there is a need for people with expertise in understanding um, DNA-based testing and how to apply it to uh, patient care. And so uh, when someone trains in uh, genetics and genomics in uh, in 2011 or in, in the next few years, they'll be able to come out of that training and really pick the area of, uh, of clinical medicine that they want to be involved in. And they'll be able to go out and, uh, and do great things.